Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is an unboxing video for the new Lulzbot 3D printer called the Lulzbot Mini. And there we go, let's have a look. It's not in there, obviously. That box is too small. That's more like it. So let's open the box. All right, so let's see what we've got. Some more octopuses. So the first thing on the top here is the instructions, um, a start here guide, a piece of filament, a checklist of all the things. And then we've got some foam and some various unpacking things. So I suppose we should have a look at the getting started guide. So what have we got? A Lulzbot sticker. We've got a rather nice diagram of the printer and the extruder there. A start here guide. So we've got quite clear instructions for the printer. There's a quick start guide, various things that come with it, and also the software which we'll look at in a moment, which in this case is the Lulzbot edition of Cura. And much, much more in the quick start guide. So let's get it out of the box and we'll work through that. So we'll take the top layer of foam off. There's some other foam blocks inside which are bracing the printer there, we can see. So I'm just gonna lift this out in one go. And there we go. I've moved the table around here so we've got a white wall behind us and we don't have all the black things behind so you can see the printer. So also in the package, as well as the printer and the documentation, we have a number of other items, including a selection of power leads, so I'll be, of course, using the UK one, but we have also US and European ones. We have some felt blocks, which are the cleaning um, pads, because this printer does auto-nozzle cleaning. We have a Lulzbot Mini USB key, the clam knife for removing prints from the bed, and its protective cardboard thing, a small Allen key, some small pointy tools, a wire brush and a sharp thing, a pair of tweezers, a USB cable and also an octopus printed on this very printer. So let's have a look in the quick start guide. So the first page says make sure you read the safety sheet which is this piece of paper which um, says obviously it's a burn hazard because things get hot, um, a pinch hazard and so on so that's worth reading as well as the big green sheet which is much more interesting. So let's go through this guide. So it says to unpack the printer, so carefully remove the top protective foam. We've done most of that. Um, there's a diagram here about these foam blocks. Remove all of the foam and confirm everything on the packing list is included in the box. Save all of the packaging materials in case you need to print it. And the box is quite substantial. Those big blocks of foam will be quite useful as a flight case for taking it to exhibitions and so on. So we'll pull all these bits of foam out, which are just for transit. Let's see, there's some at the back as well. Yep, there we go, and these ones that uh, stop the other carriage moving. Alright, so that's actually it. The next thing is to download and install the software from the Lulzbot Mini USB key. So this printer um, does not have an LCD or um, SD slot on it. It's only got a USB cable, which is plugged in the front here, so we need to drive it from, from some host software. Let's just have a quick look at some of the other hardware features though. So my initial observation is the new Lulzbot Hexagon Hot End. Don't know if you can just see that there, let's try and zoom in. Hexagon Hot End with a fan on the cold end, which keeps the heatsink nice and cool. And this is in fact an all metal hot end, which can go right up to quite hot, probably over 300, possibly 400 degrees. So we can print things like nylon and we can print polycarbonate, which needs to be at least 300 degrees to extrude. Um, the previous hot ends only did about 230 or 240 degrees for ABS and the reason there's a fan on the cold end is to stop um, all of the heat rising up and actually melting the extruder and melting the filament so that's necessary for the, such a hot end to function. We've also got this quite nice cable thing that you sometimes get on CNC machines which means the cables are nicely constrained along the carriage there. 
Um, the bed is a new surface, which is, I believe, a material called PEI, which is um, a new print surface. And this bed also levels, so as well as the foam block at the back there for cleaning the nozzle, we've got these conductive corners, um, and basically it brings the nozzle down till it touches and works out the uh, level of the bed, and then I believe it corrects it in software, which is quite innovative. And the bed itself is mounted on these corners, which are actually 3D printed in NinjaFlex. Um, apart from that, the frame itself is, of course, extremely sturdy. It feels like steel. The electronics are in this box on the side here with a fan. Um, the USB connector is at the front with the power switch and the actual um, outlet power cable is at the back. Um, we've also got this arm here, which folds right up, and that's for putting your filament spool on. So altogether, a very nicely presented machine. Looks incredibly substantial, and I particularly like the um, day glow green um, ends and the gear there on the extruder. So let's have a look at the software offering. This is the Lolzbot edition of Cura. Cura um, was previously mostly shipped with Ultimaker printers, but Cura itself is open source. Um, it's much more consumer ready than Slicer, which is um, what I've previously been using with my Lolzbot printers. And it's much more graphical and intuitive. So um, the green checkered area here represents the bed of the printer. Um, it comes with some example items, so I'm just going to put one in. I'm going to put the Roctopus in, so that's in the install directory and resources and examples, and we can just drag that onto the bed. And there's my Roctopus, and I can zoom in and out with the mouse scroll wheel, and I can move it around wherever I want it printing on the bed, and I can move the bed around with the other mouse button, and I can arrange more items in here, so I could probably fit... Um, two of these or, or whatever or several items on the bed at once so you'll see this little rendering thing here so every time I make an adjustment um, it's adjusting and telling me how long it's going to print and it thinks that's going to be 30 minutes uh, 0.79 meters of filament which will weigh six grams and that's in normal print quality mode so I've got these quick print profiles here so I can select the material as uh, maybe ABS and I can say whether I want support material and so on and I can say whether I want it in high, normal, or fast print quality. There's also some expert settings. If I switch to full settings, I get far more to play with, which is a much more similar to Slicer, so I can change all of the parameters um, and various things, the speed and so on, um, the quality there, the initial layers, the line widths, all of that. Um, I can put custom G-code in for starting and finishing, and somewhere on here I can change the actual printer settings so there's a whole bunch more printers, uh, printer settings and I can also set up multiple printer profiles so I've got one there for the Lulzbot Taz. So if I uh, just wait for that to render its settings again and I now click on control then I get the printer control uh, menu here and this actually allows me to change the temperature of the printer by typing it into the box here so I can set the temperature there, the bed temperature and I can also uh, move the printer around so I've got, it, got the printer connected now so if I just home Y for instance you can probably hear that running in the background and similarly I can move the other axes around, so we'll have a look at the printer actually doing that shortly. The printer comes with a piece of HIPS filament. I've actually loaded some ABS filament in because it's my favourite thing, so I've put that on the arm there. So that's just a reel of white ABS. And I've changed the filament over here so that it's um, into the extruder, which is very easy to do and is featured in the quick start guide. I've let the printer cool down since changing the filament. And now it should just be a case of clicking on print on Cura and the whole printer should take care of itself. So it should home, it should uh, let it cool down um, if it's not cool enough, then it should wipe the nozzle auto level and print the piece. So it's actually 
heating the nozzle up now slowly to presumably a temperature that it can wipe excess filament off at. So you can just see on the title bar there of the Cura control panel, it's currently 109 and rising and you can see that little graph. So we'll wait for that to get a little bit hotter and we'll see what it does next. So it got to about 160 degrees and it's now bringing the nozzle down, presumably to wipe on that bit of firm uh, felt that's at the back there. So let's just zoom in on that. There we go, cleaning the nozzle. And remember it comes with those spare pads for when those, uh, when that gets full of filaments. And now what we should find is that it goes and touches each corner. So we've got these conductive washers. So it brings it down very, very slowly till it touches and that conducts electricity, of course. So then it goes off to each corner so that it can level the bed and work out if it's not level. Makes quite a pleasing sound, doesn't it? A bit like an Iron Man suit. So now it's going to continue to heat up. It's about 170, it needs to go up to um, 240 for ABS, and it needs to heat the bed up to about 110, so that's going to take a couple of minutes. And off it goes, so it's now bringing the print head down, and it should be starting to print. There we go. And there is the outline for the Roctopus. So the bed levelling is um, really quite a good feature. Um, I don't have to level the bed on the TAS too often, but um, this is pretty good because obviously the bed parts expand when they get hotter and colder, so um, eventually it's going to creep a little bit. So it's really good that it levels in every print and gets rid of any errors at all. So it's going pretty fast, it's uh, practically throwing that filament out. So you can see the um, perimeters of the piece being done there. So yeah, that infill, it's uh, doing still the bottom layers, which I think are solid infill, but it's going pretty quick. And we can see the progress being reported along the bottom here. So I guess that's about 15% done, which is probably hopefully a representation of total print time, but we'll see how that works out. A roctopus is emerging. It's going quite quick actually. Note that as well as the hot end fan, which keeps well the, keeps the cold end cool, there's also a cooling fan uh, with this kind of baffle thing, which blows cold air on the print when it's needed, um, and that's turning on and off automatically. So um, basically, that's really good for doing detail parts like the hand of the roctopus, which is sticking up. And there we go, it appears to have finished. So now the printer will auto home again and it will cool down. And once it's cool, we can remove the part from the bed. So here is our finished print. I was going to film prying it off with this, but it came off far too easily when I was testing it and came off, so there's no film of it. Um, but the print surface is pretty good and you'll notice we didn't prime that with any ABS dissolved in acetone or any chemicals. We just printed straight on the bed. It stuck throughout the print um, and it came off, came off pretty easily once the bed had cooled down. So there's, um, there's our octopus that's come out extremely well, obviously including its tiny fingers, probably thanks um, well to the accuracy of the nozzle and also the cooling fan that we've got on there. So that's looking pretty good. The main observation about this printer is that it's quite consumer ready, so as you've seen lots of the printing process is totally automatic. So if you've been thinking about getting a 3D printer but you're worried about the technicalities of using software like Slicer and preparing the models so they print okay, then this is probably the product for you. 
but the product is actually open source hardware and all the software is open source as well. So that means you can still get stuck in and modify the printer and Lulzbot in fact encourage it. And you can also use Slicer and more complicated software if you want to as well. I really like the way that this printer is really portable. So I do quite a lot of shows where I go and do 3D printing demos. So this is probably gonna be the printer that I take with me because it's quite easy to carry along and fits neatly back in its box, as I mentioned. If you're looking for a bigger printer though, then there's always the Lulzbot TAS4, which prints almost a cubic foot. I have an unboxing in my channel for that printer as well, and I use those printers in quite a lot of my other 3D printed projects that you can find in my channel. Even though Lulzbot are based in Colorado in the US, they actually ship out of local depots around the world, so this printer arrived in a couple of days in the UK from the London Gatwick depot. So if you're worried about international shipping and tracking and all of those things, then you can buy locally and the printer should arrive to you domestically or at least within Europe um, within a much shorter time scale. Then you don't have to worry about the duty and customs charges and all of those sorts of things. You can also buy on Amazon worldwide. So I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing and review and demo. Check out the rest of my channel for more product reviews, unboxings and more 3D printed projects.